The, the company Studpack Musa, which is Manufacturing USA, is about um, clean food uh, using very low amounts of water um, to really attack uh, non-nutritious foods in the core areas, if we're talking about the United States, of the urban settings. We, we have a huge problem with uh, food deserts. And these, these solutions of converting containers to growing units for aquaponic, hydroponic or aquacultural farms, uh, if we're using fish like tilapia inside of these units, if you can imagine a shipping container converted and fully fit out with the latest technologies of today, um, from lighting to video to water, uh, misting, um, we have that technology and have built that out and built successful models over in the United Arab Emirates that we now have opened up another international operations and manufacturing wing here in the United States. Uh, so in the state of Florida near Hardy County um, or in Hardy County, we have a planned manufacturing facility to open in 2023, I'm sorry, 2022 in the first quarter of 2022 uh, to start manufacturing these uh, units and creating jobs. Uh, I, I love that. Uh, working yeah. with agriculture. Um, Agriculture, as we know it today, is being transformed into something called agri-tech, uh, which is agricultural technology used to grow food. Most people do today are starting to recognize the full benefit of nutritious foods that are wholesome for our bodies, uh, so that a lot of the chemicals we may be ingesting or other uh, things that are not good for us. We know about trans fatty acids. We know about all these other things that cause us all these problems with cholesterol and these kinds of things. This food solution is farm to table, your staple foods, lettuce, tomatoes, uh, mushrooms, peppers. We even grow fodder and barley in these units. Um, so all the berries, uh, pretty much the uh, main, mainstream berries that you make your smoothies with, we can grow those in these containers. And so this is a, a, a main solution for distributors, all takers like Whole Foods or Publix or Kroger's can buy these from farmers now. Uh, we're targeting farmers, uh, small farmers, family farms, who can either lease or buy these units and then grow food year-round, 365 days a year in multiple cycles and have that food available in the community where they live. The food solution uses about five gallons of water a day per container, takes about two hours a day for an individual that's trained, uh, not hard training, uh, just basic technical work or technician work to go in and out to manage um, that container and the technology and the the water cleansing and things like that that we do over the course of months. Um, and then just to make sure that the food is growing properly. Not a whole lot in that once we get the technology up, train uh, the farmer and his team how to use it. And then we start growing food and off taking and selling food. I mean, that's, that's what it's about. But how did you come up with the idea of using a shipping container? I mean, where did that idea? Well, to be honest, my partners out of Dubai uh, came to me back in 2015, and uh, they they were not partners at that point. We were just looking at our the second company I'm going to talk about, so by CMAT, our water and energy systems, and how we might work together with solar or other form, forms of energy, like ocean energy that we're doing now with Florida Atlantic University on our next test. Um, and, and how we might scale that cost and then work with distributors in different locations around Africa that have built some distributorship units and partnerships there over the last seven, eight years and make this a more scalable uh, a, a product and, and business model for everyone to benefit from, especially in drought ridden areas, in areas where we have big food shortages, which is starting to be all around the world, including in the United States, by, by the way. Uh, yes. We're starting to have big problems in certain states. What used to be taken for granted in California and Florida is no more. We have a huge problem with our citrus farm uh, uh, capacity in the state of Florida now due to disease and other challenges and generational uh, changes about who, you know family farms. Uh, we have a big water problem in, in Florida and more so in California now where it threatens to rock uh, uh, the pricing of basic foods that we take for granted that we buy out of the stores um, that we eat every day, you know, lettuce, tomatoes, onions, all this stuff. Um, we, we, we just have challenges now and of an environmental threatening in nature uh, that if we don't address this in a more systematic uh, technological way, I don't see how we meet the demand uh, for food with, with the exploding population across the globe 
you know, on the continent of Africa. And we got 1.2 billion people today that's projected to be close to 2 billion over the next 30, 40 years. Um, we, we, we really have some big challenges. So tell me, how is it working in the, in the areas where you already have this going on? Well, like the UAE, in- uh, we also, that business uh, partners and I to uh, the UAE government, uh, or I should say food cooperative, uh, farming co-op there. And we're still involved with some consulting work. Two of my partners are helping with that that live there. And we do some co-working with our company here in the United States to support us getting out the gate. Uh, we have a big event coming up here in Arkansas on December 1st and 2nd at a trade show to showcase how we do uh, this food uh, solution with about 1,000 farmers. Then the Arkansas Farm Bureau, which is a great supportive partner of ours. And back to your question, you asked how did we come? This is a group of agricultural agronomists, uh, guys that are engineers, mechanical, technical, and electrical engineers. And my partner, Donish, who was the chief engineer, uh, came up with the idea and started putting these things together. Uh, now, it's not uncommon now. It's not novel. We have different types of structures, different types of technology inside these containers or other retrofitted, you know, grow units. Uh, we have things called grow houses, not to be confused with that, which are converted warehouses or industrial complexes that we know are growing hemp and marijuana and all these other things. I won't get into that very much, but we can do some things with the medicinal side of the house, uh, okay. working with groups that are, are legitimately doing things in a licensed way. But that's how it came about. And, you know, the big solution is farm to table, staple foods at an affordable price. I mean, one of these containers can produce somewhere between 180 to 300,000 heads of lettuce per year, depending on if it's a 20 or 40 foot container and, you know, how well it's managed by the distributor. But uh, you know, do the math at about, you know, fifty to $75,000, depending on what you're growing in there. Now we have to set up the technology at 50 cents a head of lettuce, you know, 180,000 heads, that's 90,000 Your units paid for managed in that first year. Or if you're leasing it, you know, you're in good shape and uh, you should be doing well. So there's plenty of all taking capacity out here. No shortage of folks want to eat food every day. This is true. And there's also no shortage of people who are looking or ideas like this to invest in. And so between this, you know, what you're doing with Stud Pack Musa and uh, Sabai Samet, how can, you know, first of all, tell us about one or the other, you know, okay. either tell us how to invest or tell us about uh, Sabai Samet and then tell us how to invest in what you're doing. Okay, Sabai Samet, that's S-E-B-A-I-C-M-E-T, which the C-M-E-T are capitalized, stands for Celestial Miraculous Energy Technologies. And Sabai means show us the way how to do that, basically, is what it's saying. And so in the marketing of that, in the conceptual phase of, of really the ideation phase of getting that together, my good partner, Lee Markham, uh, is the inventor. Uh, we started working with the Florida Institute of Technology back in 2007, 2008, scaled it up in a tank test in 2009, then went out in the ocean in 2010, 11, and 12 with successive open ocean tests to be build out the model and then began building a magnetic generator and power takeoff system, which is where we are now. We've been through two major market meltdowns with subprime uh, market and then, of course, COVID. And so we have robust opportunities for investors that are hedge fund investors, uh, private investors, angel investors to engage us. We own 100% of both companies today. Um, I I and my partners, uh, we don't owe any money. Um, And we are in a position right now to be in the last stages of opening up the facilities uh, within the next three months for uh, Stud Pack and within the next uh, probably six to nine months, uh, beginning on the front edge of finishing up our commercialization of Stud Pack's unit, which is an an ocean energy system uh, designed to work uh, about 10 to 30 feet deep, one to three miles out from shore, near shore capacity for um, islands, for uh, communities like Miami, um, others where we have 70% of the people in the world live near shore, not in violent water, in low uh, action where you get, in, get into, you know, on the beach and go in the water, you know how those waves rock you back and forth. If you can imagine some kind of unit below the ocean on the floor of the ocean, you know, shallow, but that wave running over it and moving a wing back and forth and spinning a rod that then generates power into a generator that we use technology onshore, just like you use with regular 
uh, uh, power generation and electricity, step up, step down transformers, and then we power up homes, we power up uh, whatever it needs to be powered up. Yeah. So I just wanted to clarify because, you know, you're on it, you're talking about, I'm like, I want to make sure people understand this is a wave energy machine that you guys have come up with that generates, you know, energy and power. Absolutely. And um, that the, the, this can be uh, what we call wave farms where multiple units are coupled together to get them what we call megawatts or kilowatts of power out of uh, electricity, out of those units from the power that's generated. Uh, we then do distribution transmission, just like uh, any onshore uh, transmission system, but we call this green energy that mix into our traditional grid. I won't get into the grid. Uh, there's a lot of challenges with that, but we do a lot of things with carbon credits, a lot of things with offsets, and then we have where we can go fully off grid and do what we call micro and smart grids, especially on islands and not, you know, for localized energy. Uh, cost uh, for island-based communities like Puerto Rico, all these storms that we have that's coming in, we do what we call disaster recovery and management, emergency management systems that we come in with a full-blown design for community and the power is the key uh, driving force to make sure that that community can get back up and going. And how much energy are we talking about uh, that can be generated by these wave machines? Well, I mean, you're talking about a traditional farm can power up, you know, thousands of homes. Uh, you could have power up an entire island with the right amount of, of systems and structural design. Now, there's a lot of work that goes on with uh, marine protected areas, uh, working with uh, the ocean energy uh, and wildlife management, uh, marine wildlife management groups and organizations, especially in the U.S., then the Department of Energy, of course, and what we call FERC and NERC, uh, which are nuclear energy and federal energy uh, agencies, and then with NOAA and the National Oceanic Atmospheric Administration, and something we call BOMER. I won't go through all those, but these are all regulatory authorities that tell us how we have to environmentally situate these units so we're not harming fish or Absolutely. any other of the marine environment. We have no propellers, jets, or blades on these units. Uh, so um, the, the key for us is how do you manage a violent, very uh, um, resilient environment like the ocean how do you manage your systems in that environment? So it's to be creative with the kind of materials we use, the way we encase things, how we maintain it, uh, technology that we use like drones or robotics to dive down, monitor and do other things. There are so many other benefits that come from having these units in the ocean, like managing a uh, monitoring of data related to wildlife and marine life uh, uh, that have a proximity to where these uh, systems are located. So between stud pack and growing food, so by cement and generating energy, we have two of the five key components that make up the things that we need in life. Housing, food, water, waste management. And at the end of the day, we, we need obviously um, uh, uh, things that have to do with our uh, uh, workforce development uh, components. So we have a lot of those things built in to our overall system for integration and management, even technical training uh, programs for STEM, uh, based uh, type management with technical schools. Thank you so much for joining me, uh, Terrence, and uh, we'll be right back. Thank you, Jackie. I appreciate it.